Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me again today. It's almost November, so I get to invite you to something new. On November 8th, we're launching something called FX. It stands for Family Experience, and it's a worship environment designed for elementary kids and their families. So here's what I need you to do. Encourage your parents to sign up and reserve a table for your family. All right, all that information is in their e-news. They just need to read that e-news and respond to it. We need to reserve tables because there's only so many tables that we can actually fit in there while maintaining social distance. Now, what are, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to worship together, we're going to play together, and we're going to learn together because we want to grow together closer to God, right? We want to embrace and live out this adventure field, good life in Jesus, whether we are in kindergarten or fifth grade or whether we're adults or teenagers. So invite your whole family on November 8th for family experience. All right, now it's our last week to talk about integrity, and this is a really great lesson. We're talking about the verse in Philippians 4, 8, where we get to learn what it is we should really focus on, because what we focus on is what's going to come out. And if we want to live a life of integrity, a life where we choose to be truthful in everything we say or do, well, we need to focus on some good things. Take a look. Are you always you? Let me try that again. Are you always the same you, no matter who you're with? It's tempting sometimes to wear two different faces in two different places. You're polite to your teacher, but you snap at your mom. Or you answer every question in small group, but you don't speak up when a kid at school is being bullied. Or you're always careful with screen time at home, but at a friend's house, you visit websites your parents haven't okayed. You tell yourself you're not lying. Not really, not with your mouth, but your actions say that you're two different people. Instead, you can choose to be truthful in all you say and do. Treat everyone with respect, not just the people who can help you. Choose to always obey your parents, even if they're not around. And if you love building epic Lego creations at home, don't pretend at school you don't like Legos because it might not be cool. When you choose to be the you that God made you to be, no matter where you are, others can see God at work in you. That's why integrity is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. This isn't gonna work. I'm gonna do really bad today. I'm gonna forget what I have to say. I might as well just give up. Hi, I'm Graham and I'm going to fail. Sorry, but I'm just trying to be honest. I'm trying to have integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. And the truth is, the speech I have to give later today is going to go badly. I am supposed to talk to a bunch of strangers about different kinds of masks, but every time I give a speech, I get so nervous that everything I want to say comes out wrong. I don't know if this happens to you, but I keep hearing these voices in my head. You're not very good at talking to people. When you tell jokes, they stink. Other people are way better at this than you. The more I listen to these voices, the more I believe them. So it's probably better if I don't even do the speech today. Can't mess up if I don't try, right? That way you won't be embarrassed. Good point, teddy bear voice. So in today's story, we're learning about how to control what you think. <laughs> like that would be helpful. Wait, would that be helpful? No, I mean, no. <laughs> Aw, thanks for being honest, weird horse voice. I knew I could count on you. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. 
the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8. Horatio liked to keep track of things in his head. Five kinds of cereal in the cabinet. Seventeen braids on his sister Nala's head. Two voicemail messages left on his parents' landline phone. Oh, seriously, Mom? You are so stuck in the 1990s. Horatio was especially good at keeping track of things that went wrong. Number one, we're out of chocolate frosted sugar bomb cereal. Horatio's mother did not always appreciate his lists. I did not buy that. Your dad bought that. Number two, it is freezing in here. Put on a sweater. Number three, Miss Watson is making us do a group project and they are the worst because everyone else drags me down. Horatio, can you please focus on something positive for once? Just keeping it real. Oh, oh, I know about positive stuff. Miss Christie told us. Horatio's little sister, Nala, began rummaging around in the stacks of random paper on the counter. There is nothing positive about this morning, and I'm positive about that. Nala pulled out a scribbled on handout and waved it triumphantly. Philippians 4, 8? Do not read me a coloring sheet. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Mom, make her stop bugging me. No, this is good. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Horatio just glared and checked out the lunch that Mom had packed. Is this strawberry jam in my sandwich? You know I only eat apricot jam. Over the next two hours, Horatio counted dozens of annoying things. Number one, this bus stinks like dirty socks stuffed with Cheetos. Number two, the classroom door needs some WD-40. Number three, Miss Watson is wearing yellow, and I hate yellow. Number four, this pencil is making a giant callus on my finger. Number five, group projects are still the worst. Number six, it's way too hot over here. And to make matters worse, Miss Watson had put Tish James in charge of the group. Ugh. So, we get to do a report on Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. I'll write the history, and Jordan, you can paint a picture, and Horatio, you research stuff about the land and animals around it. Number seven, Tish is super bossy. Oh, and here's a picture of the lighthouse. Tish held up a glossy photograph and Horatio opened his mouth, ready to complain about how boring lighthouses were. But he couldn't do it. Hatteras Lighthouse, spiraling into the sunset sky, was breathtaking. He could picture walking the beach and waves crashing as the warm light glowed overhead. Ah. And Horatio couldn't help hearing an echo of his little sister's voice. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. <laughs> there it was, right in front of his face. Horatio found brand new thoughts forming in his brain. Hey, that looks really cool. That's amazing. It was as if a switch had flipped in Horatio's head. After seeing one good thing, he started to see more. Jordan had brought in some paintings he had done. Number one, Jordan, you are a really great artist. Miss Watson helped Horatio solve some tough fractions by drawing a funny sketch. Number two, Miss Watson is a super creative teacher. Mom had packed homemade cookies and Horatio's lunch. Number three, my mom makes the best chocolate chip cookies on the planet. Who wants to share? By the time Horatio got off the school bus. Number four, Mr. Rob drove us right up to our house because of the rain. He was actually smiling. Mom met them at the door. Hey kids, how was school? At that moment, Nala shook out her wet umbrella all over Horatio. And for a moment, Horatio frowned. Nala braced herself. Uh, sorry. Number five, I have a closet full of dry clothes upstairs. Nala's eyebrows shot way up. What happened to you? 
Nothing. I just realized I've got some pretty great things to focus on. So your day went okay? Number six. It was positively awesome. Horatio beamed and ran upstairs to change his wet shirt. He had a lot of brand new lists to make up in his head. The Apostle Paul wrote, Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. You know what that means? It means you're in charge of what you think about. Maybe you can't control every single thought that enters your brain. Think about fish. You must think about but you can control the thoughts that you focus on. No! <laughs> yes, you can. Having integrity doesn't just mean you're honest with other people. It means you're honest with yourself too. And to do that, you need to try and focus on things that you know are true. Things like, God made you. God forgives you. God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on a cross for you. And he's big enough to bring Jesus back from the dead. So he's bigger than all of the things that you and I worry about. So the one thing to remember from today is this. Focus on what's true. And if you ever feel like you can't control your thoughts or if the voices inside seem too loud, talk to someone you trust about it. Find someone who will help you stay focused on the truth of God's amazing love for you. You know what? I'm gonna choose not to believe the voices that are telling me that I'm not any good. God made me, I am good. And then I'm going to try to give the best speech that I can. Bet you didn't see that coming, did you? No, <laughs> I mean, nope. Yeah, yeah, I thought not. I'll see you around everybody. I'll be thinking about you, bye. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. Think about, think about, think about such things. Brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, hey! I think about such things, I think about such things, I think about, I think about, I think about such things, I think about such things. Such things. Think about, think about, think about, think about, think about such things. Think about, think about, think about, think about such things. That's right.